So glad to have you all here today. My name is Erin. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the student recruitment officer at the UBC Vancouver campus. I would like to acknowledge the land that UBC has built its Vancouver campus on, which we work, learn, connect, and innovate is the unceded ancestral and traditional territory of the Musqueam peoples. This land has always been a significant place of learning and continues to provide that to us today. I do want to mention that we do have the Q&A and the chat open right now. We'll use the chat in case you have any kind of technical difficulties, if you're unable to hear us at any point um, or anything like that then you can use the chat to ask those questions. Uh, and then we also have the Q&A where you can ask any questions that you have today. We have two folks here that will help answer those questions throughout the session. And then we will also open up the Q&A at the end to address those out loud. Um, we will be recording this session. So we will be making this available after the event. Uh, we should have it out by the end of the week and you'll get an email with that recording. All right, so I'm gonna pass it over to Kyle who's gonna take us away to get started and then I'll join back on in a few minutes. Thank you, Erin. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this UBC engineering presentation, we hope. Over the next hour, you can learn a little bit more about UBC and, of course, have your questions answered throughout this presentation. So my name is Kyle Watson. I am an engineering advisor from UBC's Okanagan campus. My pronouns are he, him. And I'd like to acknowledge that UBC's Okanagan campus is situated on the territory of the Silk Okanagan Nation and their peoples. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners and caretakers of the land that you are joining us from today. So let's get started on this presentation. Thanks so much for joining everybody. Um, you might be wondering, what is engineering? You're probably here because you have curiosity about engineering or you wanna learn a little bit more about engineering or someone told you that you had to be here and so you've dragged your heels into this session, but either way, we're gonna cover what UBC engineering is all about. And first we gotta learn what is engineering. So in high school, you might've taken some courses in math, physics, maybe chemistry, or even biology. Based on your schoolwork so far in some of those subjects, what can you conceptualize engineers to, to do? So Aaron previously mentioned we have the chat function. If you look down towards the bottom of your Zoom window and click on the chat area, let's engage. Let's start some participation right here. So I'm going to ask a question to you, and if you're comfortable, type your answer into the chat. What do you think engineers do? Go ahead, type it in the chat now. Let's see what everybody thinks. If you look down at the bottom area of your Zoom window, you can check, select the chat function and then enter in some submissions. Go ahead and type it in now if you're comfortable. What do you think engineers do? Some folks putting in some answers. This is awesome. Process of designing something, making it work, creating, designing, fixing, building things making things, solving the world problems. Wow, this is a smart bunch here. Innovating, lots of creating, innovation, solving, applied science, excellent responses, everyone. Thank you so much for participating in the chat. Okay, question number two, you can still enter this into the chat as well. What engineering creations do you maybe interact with on a daily basis? Interact with or see, type some, some answers into the chat here. What which engineering creations do you see? Computers, phones, the iPhone, electronics, software, vehicles, cars, planes, computers, streets, bridges. This is awesome. Great job, everyone. We have some very keen future engineers in the bunch here. Maybe some less obvious things that you might not uh, consider. Maybe the water you drink or the COVID vaccine, that's pretty recent and, and relevant. The cereal you might eat in the morning or that Diet Coke you love to have at lunch. All of these things have been influenced by an engineer. So to start um, breaking down the difference between engineering and maybe some other fields, let's take a closer look at what engineering is versus science or an engineer versus a scientist. So a scientist, they, they typically seek to describe and understand the natural world. An engineer though, they're gonna consider various criteria 
and constraints in order to design solutions to problems. Lots of good answers in the chat there. So designing, designing solutions to problems, needs and wants that make the world better. And this of course includes technology, environment, medicine, life and natural and physical sciences focus on attaining a fundamental knowledge about a subject through maybe some empirical or often quantitative methods. An engineer's goal, on the other hand, though, isn't to necessarily discover new scientific pr principles by observing phenomena, but rather to apply those scientific principles attained through that scientific research. So for instance, scientists, they know a lot about the human body, both inside and out. They can direct engineers on what knowledge is most relevant, and the engineers can then apply that knowledge to mass produce vaccines so that everyone in Canada and around the world can have access to those vaccines or perhaps even create a bionic arm. You can see in the photo here, engineers create a bionic arm in the form of a prosthetic. So great responses. Thanks for everyone participating in the chat. Engineering is so cool. We're going to dive into some more information about what engineering is, is like at, at UBC. And so at UBC, as an engineering student, you really have the chance to write your own story through your own experiences. And you don't want to hear about the engineering student experience for me. Let's hear from a current student, Madison, who's here joining us tonight to share a little bit about her engineering story. She's a bit famous. You might recognize her from the engineering stories team. Welcome to the presentation, Madison. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kyle, for that great introduction. Um, so yeah, I'm Madison, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm in my uh, fifth year of mechanical engineering at UBC's Okanagan campus. Um, and I'm also in the biomedical option. So I grew up off of the coast of BC. So I'm pretty familiar with the BC area and I heard really great things about UBCO, which was one of the reasons why I decided to uh, go here. I also love the location of the campus and the size of the campus. I was definitely between UBC Van and UBCO, but just as someone who grew up in a smaller town and also grew up with a smaller um, uh, high school, I definitely was looking for a more tightly knit um, community feel at the university, which I, did, I think I've definitely achieved going to UBCO. Um, I also love the backing of the big university as well. Um, so I decided to go into engineering because I just really liked STEM. I knew I liked mathematics um, and science, and I heard really great things about uh, engineering and the job prospects afterwards. So I like the open-endedness to the, the career path of engineering. I know a ton of engineers who ended up in completely different fields, but have found their degree useful. So um, for me, it was really important that my degree would, would end up with a job that I really liked in the end, and also wouldn't um, narrow me down to something too niche in case my interest changed as I grew. Uh, also, I've been involved with various student-led organizations, such as the Engineering Society. I was the vice president of student life, so I've actually learned to become an event planner while getting an engineering degree, which was um, completely unexpected, but has been awesome. Um, I also helped with the Western Engineering Competition. I was the chair for that, so it was basically half of the country's universities were in attendance, and we hosted a big competition, which ended up going online because of COVID, but I learned a ton during that and made a ton of awesome connections, and UBC really helped facilitate that for me. Uh, and also now I'm the social content creator for the School of Engineering. So there is work study positions, which is also a really cool way to work while uh, managing your studies as well. Um, so I am graduating this year and I'm super excited. And with my ultimate goal is to move into biomedical engineering and being kind of on the people side of things. I do like working with people. Um, so ideally, um, I'm interested in a position where I can help with bridging the gap between engineers and end users. So for example, I know that you can work in like operating rooms and be training um, uh, surgeons on the equipment that your biomedical engineering company works on. So that's kind of my end goal and a bit about my story. Um, yeah, so these are our social medias that we have um, that I'll be posting on. Uh, yeah, that's all for me. Thank you so much, Madison. Super inspiring. Madison will be available for uh, Q&A at the end and throughout this session. If you want to use that Q&A function down below to be typing in a specific question, please feel free to do so. From here on out for that, that chat function is more for troubleshooting 
um, if you're maybe having trouble with audio settings or different things like that. And uh, yeah, so at UBC, our engineering students, they really have the chance to write their own story. And something that we are really proud of is uh, our engineering students get to be part of an amazing community. So we're so excited that you are considering UBC engineering. Let's take a bit of a closer look at what it means to be a student at, in, in UBC engineering on either of our, our campuses. We really like to foster community right from the get-go. And so on both campuses, um, you have an opportunity right from the beginning to access multiple support systems. If it be first year orientation to get you acquainted with the campus or your dorm room or finding your classes or your favorite new spot to study or grab a snack, some really great ways to get involved and be, be mentored by upper level students. Um, we also have a variety of clubs, which is an awesome way for you to connect with your peers. UBC Engineering ensures that students are well supported and you have everything that's needed to navigate your interests um, or your needs. And so, for instance, we have an, uh, the Engineering Undergraduate Society, which organizes events throughout the year and provides a space for you to connect with your peers and seniors who can talk about their journeys. UBC Engineering as a whole, a faculty, it's one faculty that spans across both campuses, but oftentimes there's different names for the team or department on each campus. For example, Madison was chatting about how she was involved with the Engineering Society in the Okanagan campus, same club as we were just referring to there as the Eng Engineering Undergraduate Society on the, on the Vancouver campus. But there's lots of ways to find your own community within engineering and create that support network. After all the engineering degree, it's it's quite rigorous. You're, you're taking pretty challenging courses and sometimes more courses in a semester than, than other students and other degrees. And it can be tough, but it's all about finding that support network, building the resources around you, be it peers from your class, peers from like-minded interest clubs or support networks coming from UBC staff and, and faculty. So um, yeah, lots of ways to get involved right from the get-go and foster that community, um, no matter which campus you end up on. We also have things called design teams or even engineering clubs. And so this is a way for uh, you to also get involved. If you're going to join a design team uh, specific to engineering, here's a on this slide here, a sample of all the design teams on the Vancouver campus. Essentially, a design team is a chance for you to compete on behalf of the UBC engineering within that, that team. Here's some Okanagan teams there too. And there's also engineering clubs. So you can join a club, maybe it's women in engineering and gather with other women also in engineering and accomplish some really cool initiatives. Beyond that, there are many clubs outside of engineering offered on both campuses based on particular interests you might have. If you really like a particular sport and you want to gather in the middle of the night to watch that sport from a European coverage, or if you want to join the ice cream club and get a text message when there's free ice cream being served on campus, there's lots of different ways to get involved, find that community, blow some steam off outside the classroom and, and enjoy that, that experience. Um, there's also ways for you to enhance your degree experience or customize your degree. So at UBC, you'll be earning a degree in what's called the Bachelor of Applied Science. You will major or focus on a specialization, but later on in your degree, you can complement to that Bachelor of Applied Science. You can go for a minor, you can add dual degrees, you can go for an option, you can study abroad or add a co-op or get involved with research. There are so many ways for you to customize your degree experience, for you to write your own story. This comes later on your degree. So after your first year or during your first year on campus, this is a great way to get involved, chat with advisors, chat with current students like Madison and learn about some of the different opportunities that are out there as you write your own story through UBC Engineering. What's really cool about the UBC Engineering degree is you are getting hands-on design experience right from the very start of your degree. You're going to be exposed to design projects where you will work in teams with other first year students simulating real world engineering projects. And you're also going to have courses throughout your degree year after year that continue to build 
on those project-based, design team-based learning experience. And this happens every year throughout your degree, ultimately culminating in your final fourth year engineering design capstone project, which is a signature course for UBC engineering on both campuses. Um, this is really cool. You get partnered up with a group of fellow students, you get partnered with an industry partner and you're solving real world problems. Just like you mentioned in, in the chat earlier, last year's engineering design capstone winning team from the Okanagan campus, they were a pretty cool project. We were approached from Caslo Outdoor Recreation and Trail Society. They had a very unique combination of elements within their trail network that required a bridge and they couldn't figure out how to do it. So they contacted UBC Engineering. We said, hey, this would be a great idea for one of our design projects. A team got to work with Caslo designing what they needed to, uh, to accomplish and their project ended up winning the coveted capstone trophy and they get a plaque on the bridge that's now changing and influencing outdoor adventure and safe adventure in, in Caslo. So pretty cool example of one of the many opportunities that engineering design capstone project often results in students getting job opportunities right out of that real world simulation. So we're pretty proud of the hands-on design that you get right from the start and throughout your degree and definitely something to look forward to. Another thing that students love in engineering and, and in our programs on both campuses is getting involved with research. So do our instructors. UBC loves research. You can get involved with research if that's volunteering in a lab or earning an opportunity for paid research experience or doing it on your own through support from clubs or maybe undergraduate research um, societies or grants opportunities. There's lots of different ways to get involved with research at UBC and definitely one of the highlights uh, for our, our UBC engineering students. I'm gonna welcome Aaron back to the main stage here to chat a little bit more about our programs. Thanks, Aaron. Perfect, thanks so much, Kyle. I will have Kyle and Menison both joining me at the end of my slides that I get to so that you can all ask us questions. I see lots of great questions coming in the Q&A. There are a few about specific requirements and admission pieces, and we will get to those very shortly. So thanks for your patience. Um, but keep asking those questions in the Q&A. We'll answer them as they come up if we can. Otherwise, we'll address them at the end of the presentation. So moving on to our programs. As we've already mentioned, I work on the Vancouver campus. Kyle works from the Okanagan campus. Um, and we have UBC Engineering at both of these campuses. We're one unique program that we're able to offer such a great engineering program across these two campuses. Now, regardless of which campus you apply to, you'll start in the foundational first year of the Bachelor of Applied Science program to learn about the courses that will be the foundation of your degree. So that would be things like chemistry, physics, math, and English. And then you can go on to pursue your engineering specialization or program starting in your second year. Now we do highly recommend starting at whichever campus you plan to finish from. So that is one sort of caveat that I will mention. Before I jump into what programs we do have at both campuses, I do want to address a little bit of the questions that we typically get from high school students of what exactly is an engineering degree? Uh, you know, how is maybe the Bachelor of Applied Science different from other engineering degrees that you may have seen across Canada or throughout the world? So we'll kind of address some of those pieces first and then jump into our programs. So engineering really has a lot to offer. You'll be studying a professional degree upon direct entry into university. Many other professional programs often require a graduate degree or at least doing some undergraduate study before you can do that, or even before you can go into the workforce. And engineering is not the case for that. Again, I mentioned this a little bit already, but you may find different naming systems for engineering degrees across Canada and throughout the world, and that's because there's no standard naming system. So at UBC, it's called the Bachelor of Applied Science degree. You may hear other schools call it a Bachelor of Engineering or a Bachelor of Science in Engineering. They're all the same degree. At UBC, all of our programs are accredited, so you can be ensured that when you're graduating, your program will be accredited uh, and that you are meeting the requirements to uh, be an engineer in Canada. 
So most students will typically complete the engineering program in four years. Uh, some students may extend that degree for a variety of different reasons, things like co-op, things like getting more involved in research, adding a minor, um, or maybe you just need to spread out some of your courses. There's lots of different pieces in there that may extend your degree. But upon graduation, um, you can be fully equipped to work in the engineering workforce. Uh, so again, it's a little bit different than uh, other degrees that maybe you have to do a master's or a graduate program for engineering. You can go and start working as what we call an EIT or an engineer in training. However, if you want to, you can also go on to do a graduate program. You can go on to do something like law school or medicine. So you have all of these doors open to you. You don't have to just go into work. You can still continue in academia if that's something that you're interested in. Now, once you do graduate, typically students need to work for a period of about four years and meet some requirements in order to become what's known as a professional engineer. And those are requirements typical of all students graduating from any of the accredited programs across Canada. Once you complete those requirements, then you can continue working as a professional engineer um, where you'll have ability to sign off on drawings, be in charge of projects and all sorts of things that you may typically expect of an engineer. So that's a really brief synopsis of what it looks like to become a professional engineer and what that sort of degree gets you. So looking a little bit more at the programs that we offer at the Okanagan campus, you'll choose the program that you're most interested to continue into for your second year. Um, and there are no caps on the civil program, electrical, manufacturing, and mechanical engineering programs at the Okanagan campus. We are very excited to welcome uh, or to launch the computer engineering program at the School of Engineering in the Okanagan uh, in September, 2024. And engineering students who will have completed their first year in UBC Okanagan's Bachelor of Applied Science will be able to apply for entry to this new discipline. At this time, we can say that there will be a limit on the size of the first cohort that will be starting in September 2024. Um, because as with any new program, we do want to ensure that we provide a quality learning experience. And the best way to do this is with intention. More information will be made available to all students in the spring of 2024. However, if you're planning to just begin your first year at the Bachelor of Applied Science, the Okanagan campus in September 2024, or later than that, you can look forward to receiving even more information about computer engineering throughout your first year. So the first intake of students in that second year program will be this coming September. Um, but if you are coming into the first year in September, then you have a whole nother year before you would be considering entering that program. So we're really excited for that. At the Vancouver campus, there are 14 different specializations as shown on the slide. Students will apply for their specialization at the end of their first year. And at the Vancouver campus, you'll go through what's called the second year placement process, which is a competitive process to place you into the programs as you rank them. Uh, again, students at both campuses will learn more about what going into their second year program is going to look like. There's lots of events throughout the year for you to learn more about all of those programs. Uh, we have things coming up, like I'll mention, our open houses coming up at both campuses where you can speak directly with those programs if you want to start exploring that now. But you'll also have those opportunities to speak with programs, speak with current students, speak with professors to learn more about all of those programs that we offer uh, so that you can make that decision at the end of your first year. All right. So moving on to admission, which again, I know there was a lot of questions about this. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about admissions. So even if you are in your earlier years of high school, you can still plan your courses that you should be taking. And if you're in grade 12, ready to apply, you'll know that you have the requirements that you need to get into UBC engineering. So I want to quick mention that there are several different kind of entry routes for UBC engineering. Today we'll be focusing on the direct entry from high school into UBC. There are also options if you are attending uh, another university to do a transfer program. So we have what's known as the engineering transfer program with nine different partner institutions throughout BC. Um, you can complete that whole first year at another institution and transfer directly into our second year program if you're meeting those requirements. 
Uh, we also have the, you can transfer and do a program or equivalent courses at another institution and transfer to UBC. For Indigenous students, there are a couple of different pathways. So there is the admis uh, Indigenous admission policy that you'll be considered through. And then there is also the Indigenous transfer partnership with Langara College in Vancouver, where you can start your courses at Langara and again, transfer directly into our second year at UBC Engineering. And the last one I want to mention is for any international students that may be watching today, we do have what's called Vantage College or the Vantage One program, where you can start at UBC, even if you're maybe not meeting all of your English language competency requirements yet. If you're kind of falling just short of those, there is a program where you can complete those English language requirements while completing your first year of engineering before moving into the full second year program. So those are some different options to check out if those maybe apply to you. But again, as I mentioned, we'll be focusing on direct entry to UBC from high school. So you should be planning to apply in grade 12. We highly encourage you to apply before December 1st, especially if you're studying a Canadian curriculum. That will allow you to be considered for a first round offer uh, of admission, so an earlier offer. It will also uh, be the deadline to be considered for some scholarships that I'll mention a little bit later as well. No matter the case, you should be applying by January 15th as that is the absolute final deadline for you to apply. If you're planning on taking time off, you're not sure about when you're planning to start university, again, we typically say grade 12, but whatever the year is before you're planning to start at UBC would be when you're applying. Focusing on those admission requirements that we have, so looking at the Okanagan campus, the engineering program or Bachelor of Applied Science there is going to have some general requirements, graduating from high school, a recommendation to take at least six grade 12 level courses. We're looking for your English language proficiency. And then those degree specific requirements are listed in this table. Again, the slide is only so big. We have on our website degree requirements from all over the world, from every single province. So definitely have a look online on the website listed below. If you're not located in BC, Alberta, or Ontario, you can see what your specific courses are. But here you can see the specific courses um, if you are in any one of those provinces. At the Vancouver campus, the requirements are very similar, but just a little bit different. So I did wanna have two slides with those. At the Vancouver campus, we're looking for those same general requirements. Um, and we are looking for uh, a minimum grade of 70% in your English 11 or 12 courses. We're looking for that English language proficiency. And then those degree specific requirements, we're looking for specific grade 11 results and grade 12 uh, courses to be completed as well. So again, listed here, you can check off whether you're in BC, Alberta or Ontario, what that looks like for you. If you're not in one of those provinces, then you can check out the website on you.ubc.ca for what your requirements are. Now, one piece that I do want to mention is for students in BC, you will see that you need to complete a language at the grade 11 level. Um, so that is a requirement for students coming to the Vancouver campus. If you were in BC for your entire high school period, that may not be a requirement for other students. So again, it's really important to check what your specific requirements are. Now, I also want to mention that the degree specific requirements are more like a checklist that will need to be completed by the end of your grade 12 year. They do not be, need to be completed before you are applying. So we understand that students are taking these grade 12 courses throughout their grade 12 year. You don't need to have final grades in them, but we will look at what is available at the time of assessment. And we'll check off just to make sure that you're completing all of those degree specific requirements by the end of your high school. So what do we look for on your application? We're looking to see that you took a range of different types of courses. We're looking to see that maybe you challenged yourself if possible with either advanced courses, AP, IB, honors, things like that. And then we're looking also for what knowledge have you taken related to engineering? So really all of these are just things that we're considering. Did you do any of those things? Are you a really well-rounded student in that sense? So those can all help strengthen your application. These are not specific requirements, but just something that can help you have a stronger application when applying to UBC Engineering. 
Um, again, if you are not in any of those provinces I mentioned or in BC, definitely check our website uh, for those requirements so that you can learn more about what you need to have uh, for entry into UBC Engineering at either of our campuses. Now, talking specifically about how your application is going to be assessed, we are going to look at three main components. We're going to look at your personal profile, your overall academic average, and then your core academic average. So for your personal profile, these are questions that are like really short essay questions. We're asking you about um, what you've done outside of the classroom, highlighting any experiences you've had, and it should really be focused more on a reflection and what you've learned about yourself more than the like number of experiences you've had or like what you've done. Um, that's not necessarily so much what we're concerned with, but we're really looking for that reflection of did you work outside of school? Did you have to babysit your siblings outside of school? Did you, were you involved in leadership activities? Were you part of a sports team? How did all of those other experiences that you've had outside of your classes influence who you are as a person? For your academic profile, we're looking again at your overall academic average, which is going to be all of your grade 11 and grade 12 academic courses that are available at the time of assessment. We're also looking at your core academic average, which is going to be any courses in the grade 11 or grade 12 level related to language arts or English, math and sciences at that grade 11 or grade 12 level. So we're looking at those three components and those three different components are really important in terms of assessing you for admission. And this is why we actually can't really give out what an anticipated grade is because we're looking at all three of those pieces very closely and comparing you to other students that are also applying to our programs. When you are ready to apply, most students will go through the Education Planner BC to get started. If you have already been a student at UBC, you will apply through UBC's system. But if you're a new student or currently in high school, you'll go through Education Planner BC, which is the same application system that you'll use to apply to most BC institutions. You'll start by providing your basic information in there, and then you'll be able to proceed to select UBC as the school that you're applying to. You'll have two choices on your application that you can apply to. Um, and so you can choose something like the Bachelor of Applied Science at both campuses, or you could choose a second program like Arts or Science at the same campus as your first choice. It is really important that you carefully consider which program you prefer because you will only be assessed for your first choice program first. If you're admissible to that program, we'll stop there. Your second choice will only be considered if you are not admissible to that first choice program. Once you select your programs, you'll continue to complete the rest of your application. Students in BC and Ontario can provide your education number or your OUAC number, and then UBC can automatically get your transcripts from that once they're available. Students in other provinces or other countries will receive an email from UBC within about six weeks of applying with instructions on how and when to submit any of your transcripts that are required. I will mention that they're the same place that you would have signed up for this session. There are also application workshops available. So if you do have more specific questions about the application, those application workshops are a really great idea to sign up for where they'll actually walk you through the whole application. Now, one of the main reasons that I encourage students to apply by December 1st is so that you can be considered for scholarships. So in order to be considered for the merit-based awards, students need to have applied by December 1st, and you need to uh, click off the little checkbox that says that you would like to be considered for these merit-based awards. If you are a student in need of financial assistance, we also encourage you to submit the application for the Centennial Scholars Entrance Award and the Beyond Tomorrow Scholars Award for Black Canadian students, if that applies to you. There's also a specific award for Indigenous students entering engineering that's usually available closer to the spring or sometime around March or so is usually when that is available and you can apply for that award as well where we're looking at a combination of financial need and merit. 
Now, scholarships are your chance at free money. So we encourage you to apply for external scholarships as well. These are a great way to get some free money in your pocket to help support you throughout university. So go online and search keywords like engineering, STEM, tech, technology. If you're a young woman watching today, search for women in engineering, women in STEM, women in tech. There's lots of opportunity for you to find these external awards that are opening right now all the way throughout next summer before you may be entering UBC and you can get some free scholarship money um, for having completed a few of these uh, applications. Now a real great trick is that these applications are often asking very similar questions. So have one sort of uh, kind of essay about these questions that you may need to uh, apply to these scholarships and then you can adjust that and reuse that for all of these other applications that you may be applying for. So I really encourage you to check out as many scholarship opportunities as you can. Once you've applied to UBC, um, if you are coming to the Vancouver campus, we try and send you reminders of any other external awards that we're aware of, uh, but uh, there's tons of them out there. So really do some searching and find those awards that maybe uh, you may be eligible for. All right, so that brings us to the end of all of our really detailed information for you. Having given all of this information to you, I'd like everyone to kind of stop for a second, think about what would a world without engineers look like? That would mean no buildings, no bridges, no cell phones, no life-saving devices, no medicine to heal us, no transportation. Life is pretty good in this moment, but engineers work every single day to make our lives better than what they are right now. Engineers are improving our environment, our technology, and our medicine. They build solutions to solve our problems and to make the world a better place. So if you want to work on a team with other people to solve these problems, then engineering is a really great degree for you to consider. Before we wrap up and get to all of your questions, I do want to also mention the open houses coming up. So we just recently ho hosted our online open house, uh, which all of the recordings are available on YouTube if you haven't gotten a chance to see those yet. However, we have the on-campus open house coming up in Vancouver on November 4th. And we have the on-campus open house in the Okanagan uh, in Kelowna coming up on November 18th. So if you are close to either of those campuses, I highly recommend that you come check those out. You can register by going to engineering.ubc.ca slash open house. You'll see all of the recordings from our online open house. And then you'll also see the link to register on our on-campus open houses. The last thing I want to mention is some great resources. So here are some websites. you.ubc.ca is that general UBC prospective student website. Engineering.ubc.ca slash future will take you to our prospective student site on the Engineering Vancouver campus. Engineering.ok.ubc.ca will take you to uh, explore all of the programs available at the Okanagan campus in engineering. We have a really great feature, this really long one here that ends with ask question. We have about 30 ambassadors from both campuses who are volunteer current students that their entire job is just to chat with you online. So if you would like to go to that ask a question website, you can actually start a chat with any of our ambassadors that are in pretty much most of our, our, our programs are covered with them. And you can start a chat with any of them, asking them about their design teams, about projects they've been a part of, about their program, about life on campus, about what their favorite food to eat on campus is, anything that you may have a question about the student experience they can help you with. As Madison mentioned, uh, who is part of our engineering stories team, we also have YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok for engineering stories, where Madison and our other content creators are really showcasing what life is like at both the Vancouver and Okanagan campus as an engineering student. And then, of course, you have the email for Kyle and myself on here as well. So thank you all for paying attention and listening to us. We now can jump into some of the questions. So thank you all for the questions that you've posted so far. Kyle, are there any questions that stand out to you that you want to address first? Sure, yeah, thanks, Aaron. I saw a question in there um, asking, which campus do you recommend for engineering? And this is such a great question that we get 
at every presentation and, and most UBC presentations. And it's super cool that we have this historic, prestigious institution that is the University of British Columbia, but two great campuses to choose from. And it's really all about choosing the best fit for you. For engineering students, we strongly recommend you start on the same campus you plan to finish on, but consider what's important to you. If it's living environment, campus size, city amenities, whatever it may be. If you're in high school right now and you're not in the greater Vancouver area or greater Cologne area, and you might be moving away from home for university, this is gonna be your new home for the next four plus years of your life. And so consider what's important to you. There's a lot of cool things that are out there. Aaron mentioned that open house, if you're able to attend open house and put yourself in the shoes of a current UBC engineering student, that's a great way to help with the decision. If you're not able to travel, that's okay too. We've got virtual campus tours where you can virtually travel across campus. So there's some really great resources to use as you try to decipher that decision, but it's all about finding the best fit for you. Awesome, thanks Kyle. Um, I do see a question about IB, which we didn't really address IB or AP too much yet. So those specific requirements are listed online. So I am just replying to um, Sahesh with the website to check out. For students completing the full IB diploma, we can admit you based on your predicted grades that your IB coordinator would submit to us. Your application process still looks the same. The courses, you still need your uh, English and your math and your chemistry and physics. Uh, so those are all pieces are going to be very similar for you. We can look at your predicted grades as well. There's more information on our wileu.ubc.ca website with all of those requirements. So you can definitely check that out. Um, but I did want to mention that uh, for AP students as well, we can use your AP results um, for admission purposes if they're available at the time of assessment. So that would mean that you do need to have those completed um, before we're assessing you, which would mean that likely you've written those AP exams in your grade 11 year um, or you've written them earlier in your grade 12 year. So there are some different pieces around that, but definitely if you have any more specific questions about your scenario, you're welcome to email me um, to kind of walk through that process. But there's lots of information on our website as well. So there's another question about the uh, requirements, um, whether courses have the same weighting or importance when discussing the average. So as I mentioned, we are looking at the core academic average, which is your academic courses at the grade 11 and grade 12 level. And then we're looking at, sorry, the overall academic courses, which is your grade 11 and grade 12 academic courses, and then your core academic courses, which are related to English, math, uh, and science courses at the grade 11 and grade 12 level. So we're looking at all of those pieces. Uh, if your final grade 12 marks are available, those will have a little bit more weighting to them because they are a better predictor for us. But we know in a lot of cases that students may not have their grade 12 results available. So in that case, we will look at your grade 11 results to compare that. So that would be the only difference in terms of weighting. But those courses themselves, as long as it's an academic course, uh, will be considered. Uh, here's a question, Kyle. How many students does UBC Engineering accept each year? So how many students are in the first year program at the Okanagan campus? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks, Aaron. So we um, we typically admit around 400 students to start in first year engineering at the Okanagan campus. Um, lots of questions themed around, around admissions here. And there's a cool link in the chat. Don't leave and look at it now. But later on, you can watch a really cool video about how UBC admissions evaluates your application. Um, it's really good to check that out. It's the application pool, it's competitive and a comparative based on that that given year of, of applicants. But uh, yeah, we usually have room for around 400 students to enter direct to first year on the Okanagan campus. Aaron, how many students do you usually admit into first year on the Vancouver campus? Yeah, so for the first year at the Vancouver campus, we have about 1,000 students. 
uh, coming in every year. So again, I know that there's a question about, you know, which campus to consider and things like that. So that's also a difference is just the number of students at each campus. Uh, but I think that allows you to explore kind of what your interests are and what sort of setting you want to be a part of. And as Kyle mentioned, you can come to our open houses to really get a sense of what our campuses look like. So that's great. Erin, I see a question that's standing out to me here, um, asking about what type of projects or key indicators can help me as a prospective student determine if I'm interested in engineering. And maybe we can ask Madison, how did you determine you were interested in engineering or where did you find that, that passion in engineering? Yeah. Um... So for me, it was attending the, the workshops that are put on by UBC. I actually went to UBC Open House and kind of got to see what engineering really was. Honestly, like in grade 12, I wasn't really sure what engineering is. And it's kind of a hard thing to explain. Um, it's kind of a mindset. And that's why it's a bit challenging to explain exactly what engineering is. Um, so I feel like going to the open house as well as going to um, other engineering related events where I got to do kind of those, those silly little things where you have like spaghetti and you have to put them together with marshmallows, all those little events um, I found really fun and kind of where you get to have that creative side of you mixed with the technical side. Um, so that's kind of how I determined whether it was engineering or sciences because I was really between the two. And I really like the creative aspect of engineering and the hands-on aspect of it. Um, yeah, that was, I think really was the open house. It was one of the biggest ones for me um, uh, that I went to, yeah. That's super cool. Thanks so much for sharing. Madison, UBC has some really cool programs through Gearing Up where you can get involved, but even maybe in your local community at your current school or some groups outside of your current school in your local community, anything re related to STEM or engineering, you can take a workshop or get into an open house, or maybe you have a family friend who knows an engineer or is an engineer or studied some engineering related courses at school. It's all about asking questions filling your bucket of information as you try to determine is engineering right for me? And if so, is UBC engineering the pathway I want to go? But this is a really cool time for you to explore all your options as you set goals to accomplish uh, in, your, in your future ahead. Great questions, everyone, coming through in the Q&A here. Um, Madison, maybe you also want to speak a little bit about... Um how you chose your program and what made you kind of want to go into that and what that first year process was like for you in terms of choosing what your program would be. Yeah. Um, so when I came in, in my first year, I was definitely interested in mechanical, but I actually did kind of a funny thing where I applied to lots of different engineering programs across Canada and applied for different engineering. Um, so I wasn't actually sure which one I wanted to go into. And that was actually one of the reasons why I really liked UBC is that they allow you to have that first general year. Um, and I know that I've heard from my other friends that are now also graduating from other universities and they did wish that they actually had a, a general first year because coming out of high school, I feel like you don't know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Like you hear all this, but you don't really know until you experience it and talk to these upper year students, the professors and kind of see what it really means to be in each discipline. Um, so for me, it was, I was really between mechanical and electrical and I didn't really know which one I would prefer. Um, and when I got in, I took my mechanical courses and it just kind of, for me, I can visualize those problems a lot easier than an electrical problem. And I noticed that just right away after taking my first year of courses. And so it really narrowed my search pretty quickly. Um, so that's one of the best things about UBC is having that general first year, which might seem a little counterintuitive. Um, like you kind of want to jump right in right away, but your idea of what you want might change. So that's super beneficial to have because I know a lot of people who ended up changing anticipating electrical going mechanical or anticipating mechanical and going electrical or civil or whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, just experiencing my first year was really how I decided and figured out what courses I was better at and what I enjoyed most. I definitely hear that all the time. And especially even in Vancouver, where we have so many different types of courses or programs that students can study that they don't even know. Maybe they were set on mechanical engineering and they didn't even know that geological engineering existed. Um, and mm -hmm. then they actually were like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect thing for me. So really getting to take that time to explore, I have heard from many, many students is really valuable. Yeah. Um, I do have a couple more questions for you, Madison. So having maybe applied to other 
uh, programs across Canada. Obviously, I know that you haven't attended those other schools. So you can't directly speak to that. But what do you think sets UBC's engineering program apart from other colleges in Canada? Well, the, the general first year is definitely one of the biggest ones. Um, I have heard from other people that are in engineering that they really wish that they had that at their school. Um, and now they kind of wish they had changed career paths and they probably wouldn't have done what they did um, if they had a general first year. Um, another one is the support, honestly, from the school, especially I went through COVID with UBC and I, you know, I was in group chats with my friends who were in other engineering programs across Canada and they just didn't seem to be getting the same level of support from their faculty and from their professors and the same level of grace. So I just think the support from the faculty is, it really stands out at UBC um, and that UBC really listens to their students. So anytime like we've had an issue with anything that goes on um, academically or, you know, um, uh, in the Okanagan, I know we had the fires here. They're just so supportive um, and offering so many resources um, for us. So I would say just the, the the community culture and the support that we got from the school is definitely um, something like hearing some of the stuff from other universities. I was just shocked. Like that would never stand at UBC. So um, yeah, I just had a really great experience from uh, the faculty side as well as the students. Awesome. And of course the location too. I love BC. <laughs> Awesome. And then building onto that question, Madison, I'm wondering if you can provide any information on kind of what your class schedule looks like and what the workload is like or how you manage that. Um, I will, again, plug engineering stories because there are lots of videos on there about what your schedule looks like, what a day in the life looks like. So definitely do check out those channels. But maybe you want to speak to that quickly about kind of what your day looks like, what that class schedule is and how you manage your time. Yeah, so I was actually talking today with a few high school students about this. Um, so I think I am going to actually do a video if you guys want to follow on specifically, like going through my first year and kind of a breakdown of the semester overall too, like how certain times are more busy, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, but for first year, I will admit first year was probably one of my busiest years. Um, but it's because they have a lot of tutorials, labs, and lectures. Um, but the tutorials are to assist your lectures. So as you get on in your degree, you kind of become a little bit more independent. So those drop off. Um, so you're in five or six courses at UBCO. We have a five-year program and a four-year program. So if you're in the four-year program, which is the standard one across both campuses, you're in six courses. Um, many of those will have tutorials, which are usually like 50 minutes long associated, um, where basically you go over practice problems. You have a TA, a teacher's assistant, that will help you with those practice problems. Maybe you'll do a few little like practice quizzes and things um, in a smaller intimate environment, which is really nice um, where you can feel free to speak up compared to a lecture hall, which is much larger. And you're just kind of usually taking notes and listening to the professor. Um, usually I was going to school typically five days a week, but there is some people that get lucky with their course schedules and they end up having full days off. Um, there's usually gaps between your day, which is really nice to use for studying. Um, and I actually kind of liked it in first year that my schedule was more busy because it wasn't quite enough time to like leave and go home. Um, so I stayed on campus and it actually helped me get my work done because while you're on campus, you can use take advantage of those little gaps to get your, your work done so that you can go home at night and you're done for the day. Um, but the biggest thing for me is like finding a time management strategy that works. There's so many good ones online. Um, but for me, like note, uh, taking like making a to-do list of what is due for the week and then planning accordingly um, and that's how I also found to have a social life as well is taking note of that and then deciding, okay, I want to go out this night or I want to hang with my friends or there's a certain event coming up and planning accordingly. So you can make sure you go to that instead of procrastinating. Um, so yeah, those are the, some of the um, ways that I manage my time during first year. Um, and I will admit it got way better. Like you get, um, it's a lot at first you're getting into your course schedule as well as like just moving to a new location and becoming an adult and everything. So um just remember that it it does get easier and it's just a big transition and give yourself grace. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So check out engineering stories. I know this has been a big topic of all of the team talking about these sorts of things. So definitely check out either YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok. Um, we've been posting Instagram stories all week about kind of day in the lives as well. Uh, there's lots of content on TikTok and Instagram. And then YouTube doesn't have as much um, longer videos that are constantly being posted, but usually about once a month, you'll find our new videos on YouTube as well. Um, 
<clears throat> Aaron, Go we ahead. have some good questions coming in here related to the, the personal profile. And maybe we can we can direct another question to, to Madison here. So at UBC, there's one application, one degree, and you get two choices on, on that application. Yes, admissions is going to look at your transcripts, your grades, but the personal profile is your chance to, to tell your own story. So some questions here, what are some related volunteer opportunities or what if none of my extracurriculars are related to engineering? Madison, when you think back to applying to UBC, are you comfortable sharing some of the um, criteria or examples you put into your own personal profile? Yeah, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about maybe some of my extracurricular involvement in high school. Uh, so I joined the, we had like a leadership group and I feel like most high schools do have leadership groups. I mean, that was a really great way to gain some stuff for my personal profile to discuss as well as being part of sports teams. I was on the volleyball team um, and I was the captain. So that allowed me to kind of talk to like some leadership experience. Um, specifically, I also um, looking for opportunities at your high school. Often there's a lot of volunteer opportunities and taking those, I just kind of took those as they came. Um, and the more that you have, the more you have to pull from and experiences. And I feel like that allows you to express a little bit better in your personal profile, just the more experiences you have volunteering for different events. Like we volunteered to um, teach calculus to second graders in like a second grade, um, like look on calculus. So there's lots of opportunities that are usually um, offered by your school to try and support this. There's usually professional development, someone at your school. Um, so for personal profile, I recommend like just looking for those or if you don't have a ton of experiences um, already to talk about. Um, my personal profile, uh, quite honestly, I mean, it was five years ago, so exactly what I put in it, <laughs> I don't remember. Um, but I'm sure it was it was revolving around those things and also my passion for, for science and also like teaching kids and inspiring um, other younger kids to go into STEM, which is kind of related to my role now as a content creator as well. That's awesome, Madison. Thank you. Thank you so much. And in short, no, you do not have to have related engineering experience. Your high school courses, meeting the admission requirements, demonstrates your readiness for engineering. That personal profile is more so demonstrating your aptitude and readiness for life as a university student. As Madison mentioned, that first year was learning how to become an adult, learning how to be a successful student in university. That personal profile is uh, is your way to tell that story, show that readiness, and of course, your passion, not just for UBC, but, but for engineering. Madison, I'm going to direct it back to you here for final remarks. So if you put yourself in the shoes of a grade 12 student, partway through your, your final year in high school, what advice do you have for all those grade 12 students who are getting ready to apply to university or really excited for that transition to university? What would a piece of advice be for them from you? I would say uh, to embrace the change. I know change is hard for all of us. So embracing that change, just know that um, even, even if you're struggling with something, which inevitably you will, life you'll find challenges in life and you'll definitely find challenges in an engineering degree or any degree. Um, and just know that if, if you're struggling in something, that means that you're pushing yourself, your boundaries and you're learning something. So even if you're struggling, just have, have faith that you can get through it. Um, it might be hard at times, but honestly, you, you'll learn, uh, how to manage your time, how to get through, um, especially like your first month, that's probably the hardest time is just that adjustment period, but you will adjust, you'll find your community and things do get easier. I always try to tell that to, to incoming students. It can seem like a lot at first, but trust me, it gets easier and join clubs, join clubs and organizations to find your community um, because that makes things just so much more uh, enjoyable and easier on you. Awesome, thank you so much, Madison. And thank you, Kyle, for presenting with me today. And a huge thank you to everyone that came to watch our session today. As I mentioned in the beginning, this has all been recorded and we will be uploading this to YouTube and sending an email to all of you with the link to access this recording if you would like to watch it again. I had a quick scroll through and I really think that we've answered most of your questions, but if we did miss any of your questions, you are welcome to send me an email. My email is still on the screen, erin.fair at ubc.ca, and you'll be getting an email, like I said, later this week that you can reply to if you have any further questions about coming into UBC engineering. So I hope to see many of you at our upcoming open houses. 
Thank you so much for joining this evening or morning or afternoon or wherever you may be joining us from. It's been great getting to chat with all of you. Uh, and thank you to Taya as well, who is helping answer questions in the chat today. Uh, but have a great evening, everyone. And I hope to see you at some of our events or reach out to me, start a conversation with our ambassadors on our website uh, or connect with our engineering stories team as well. So thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your day.